we've taken the approach that a big differentiator for us is the space between stations and the space between 100%. silos, especially if you're coming out of a, you know, out of a suite or out of a salon that maybe was jam packed with stations and stylists, whether it was busy or not, there's a lot of them that have tried to put them within every couple of feet. Yes. That is just, that's not a great customer experience. So there, there is a capacity no matter what size salon you have. But I think that's one decision we've made is, Hey, we want a great, if we want a luxury experience, we got to give our clients space. We got to give our staff space. Yes. It's got to have a nice flow for that ultimate experience, I guess. Yeah, nobody wants to be stacked on top of one another. And, right. and if you want to grow the stylist when they're coming to tour your salon, for me, that's a big thing that I would look at. You know, am I going to be turning my chair and backing up into the next person? Or are they going to be blow drying hair into the face of my other client <laughs> right. or me? And I'm like moving my hair as I'm trying to work. So that's just not enjoyable. And then, and then if you have an assistant with you too, you got you have two people behind one chair. You got to have some room for that. Right. You know, I mean, it's just not fun. So that's that's a good way for people to look at your space and they might not even tell you why they're not going to come board, but that's probably part of it. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I think stations is one of the primary things that we look at related to the salon space. Oh, first thing. I, I think again, if you have six chairs, you know, four to six chairs minimum, that might go up to a dozen chairs. If you grow your salon and it's just the place to be, Maybe you can stack a few more in there. Certainly every salon space has a little bit different configuration. Is it a long and narrow space where it's easier to stack them along a the side right. or is it a big wide space? You know, this is a pretty wide space. We'd have to look at some different things that we do to, to move more chairs. But I think that space, I think the perception, like you mentioned, is another great point where, you know, if it looks like you have 20 empty chairs versus two empty chairs and there's an energy even with a smaller group yes. of people, but you're working on the right clientele, there's the right energy and the right luxury experience in there. People can look past that. It's just when it all looks dead or you have a bunch of stylists sitting yeah. in there, sitting in the chairs, you know, not working on people. There is that perception that I think is, is really important. Yep. I agree. And no one wants that. And I think also don't, don't build it too soon. You know, that's more stations, more investment, more money sitting there. Right. Until you can get it revved up a little bit. So you know, add them later. Yeah. You can always order stations. Yes. They might take a minute at this point in time, but add them later. Right. So, yeah, no, I think that's good. And again, uh, you know, I thought the leaving space for double booking, if you're someone yes. that grows very quickly, which is what we're trying to teach people how to do, you will want two chairs. You will want to maximize right. your time there. If you are going to spend some time in the business and not on the business and managing the business, let's maximize those hours you're there use that, that yeah. space that you have, um, you know, to the, to maximize your profits on that portion of things. Yeah. And some people don't like double booking, but I also think that's a, a no, no. Like if you, if you have that many clients that want to get in with you, hire an assistant, get some help, right. You know, maximize your time at the salon. Yep. I, that's just in my opinion, foolish. So yeah, I agree. Cool. All right. So stations, we've got that figured out. Let's maximize the space. Let's make it look good. You know, we don't want it to look like a, a, you know, six stations stacked to the front. But the next thing is uh, just looking at the experience, our, our number two focus. And this one took me a while to care about. I was like, oh, we need these shampoo bowls. We got to have X number of right. shampoo bowls. And I was like, D is that important? Like we need to maximize the number of chairs in here. Cause I'm just like, we can make X per chair. If we do X, Y, right. Z, that's to me where all the money came from, but there's a throughput portion of things where mm -hmm. if you can't get the clients that you're working on through because the, the, the bowls are a, a bottleneck. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That that's a huge problem. And one that it took us a salon or two for me to say, okay, now I see why we need to take up some of that square footage and really right. put in the right number of shampoo bowls for your stylist. I guess, talk to me about what you've seen in that area in the past. Cause I know what I've seen once, yeah. once my eyes were open to it, but you know, Help me understand where some of those issues can come into play with not enough space for that. Yeah, I mean, in, in our Minneapolis salon was a larger salon and we did not have enough shampoo bowls to accommodate it when everybody was working on a Saturday, you know, and all the stylists working at the same time. Yeah, throughout the week, people take off days and stuff, so then maybe it wasn't an issue. But right. um, sometimes those shampoo bowls are occupied for an hour or more. 
Mm-hmm. It, you know, there's we do toning at the shampoo bowl. We do treatments at the shampoo bowl. Um, I do a lot of extensions, like I talked about. So that's a lot more hair to tone, a lot more uh, hair to get through with washing and stuff like that. So it takes some time, and you don't. You don't owe, not everybody brings them back to their station to apply the toners and stuff like that because it is messy and whatnot. So you got to accommodate for that. So we had figured our system is one shampoo bowl for every three stations. Right. Um, I mean, if you get to have more, great, but don't take up all your space with that. But you definitely want to make sure you can accommodate the stylist too, because there's nothing worse than sitting a client that is ready with their lightener on and they can't, we can't wash them out in time. Right. It's just not good for their hair or the experience when they know you're like, hey, I'm ready for you. Let's go back. And then you're like, oh, wait a minute. Let's stand here and watch everybody else shampoo. I mean, that's right. just not what you want. And they're getting rushed at the bowl because they can see someone's yeah. there. So it just, it creates unnecessary chaos. And sure. that always deters from the luxury experience. And that's one mm-hmm. thing we're, we're hyper-focused on is yeah. it's got, a, it's a dance. Everything in the salon is a dance and it has to work well. And having the right number of shampoo bowls, like you said, that three to one, or even sometimes we've talked about two to one, depending on what type of yeah. salon you're in. Yeah, maybe you could get away with four to one. But I really think now that yes. that is, especially based on doing extensions and, or or something, if part of your service is you're just running people through that shampoo bowl, just one after another, you really got to think through that because it's not just about the chair. They have a, a very tight connection based on yes. this business. Yeah, for sure. Anything else, I guess, as far as the, the shampoo bowls are concerned? Uh, no, I just think just make sure you have enough, like we talked about. And the space, depending upon where you lay out your shampoo bowl, are you washing behind? Are you washing on the side? That all matters, too. So you got to space them out accordingly for that. Um, right. And then just a back bar area. You know, you got shampoo, towels, uh, all that, too. So there's right. just there's going to be some space that you're going to need to accommodate for on your blueprint when you're figuring this out for that whole shampoo uh, back bar area. Yep. And don't short it because you're going to need don't it. Don't short it. Don't short it. I've been there, done I that. To tell myself, don't, don't, don't short don't it. Don't short Trust it. Trust Amy on this one. Yes. And I do. Yes. All right. The other area that I think as we start to look at laying out the square footage that you, again, I look at how many chairs because I look at how much revenue we can bring in per yes. chair. What's the upside? Yes. You know, how yes. many in a, in a best case scenario could we work in? In a worst case scenario, how many chairs do we need filled for us to just have a profitable business? But one area that again, as we've built out more ground up, Mm -hmm. you know, gutted brand new salon kind of things, it's the storage. And I'm always like, what do you need storage for? Everybody has all their stuff at the, at the station. You know, what's the big deal? And you're like, no man, this is how it goes down. That's exactly what I No man. Trust your wife. Like, no bro. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Dude. Dude, trust me, you're going to want more storage. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about that. I guess why, why is that such an important thing in your mind? And you know, why did you have to tell me that I was wrong about that so many times? I don't know. You should just listen to me. (laughs) Um, no, the storage is really important. So it, that also depends on what kind of stylist you're having. Are you going to have a rental based salon? Are you going to have a commission or a hybrid? Uh, the renters are going to want to bring their stuff, right? They're renting a space from you. And if they're anything like me, they have a lot of stuff. Right. Um, because I want to make sure I can accommodate anybody. If I get a new client, I want to have all my tools and everything there. So you got to have enough storage for their color and um, tools that they use. If they do extensions too, then they really have stuff. Put that in at the beginning because it's really hard to find room for storage. Right. I mean, we... In our Minneapolis one, again, the big salon, we ran out of room for storage. We had lockers in the bathroom. Right. Yeah, we did. Yeah. You had to put them somewhere. So now we're sneaking lockers in the bathroom for our stylists to put their purses and whatever else. Well, if that bathroom's occupied, you're not getting your purse. Right. So it just gets awkward. But I just so now from the last two since that, uh, I always make sure I have maximized storage right out the gate. It's the same in, with a house situation, I think. There's never enough storage once you get in there. Right. Put it in at the beginning. Trust it. But yeah, so make sure you have enough for all the, the stylist products if they're renters. Um, and then make sure you have enough storage just for your stylist in general to put their things. Right. Because they're going to come to work with their stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and again, there there is a lot of stuff that goes into a salon. Uh, if you have extra back bar, you have extra towels, all that stuff. That all needs a spot to go yes. and and you don't want a salon that looks cluttered. Again, I hate clutter. 
Yeah, I know. Our oh, kids know too. I hate clutter. <laughs> I don't fix it, but yeah. No, I, they don't fix it. No, but I absolutely. Wor- I don't like working in clutter, and you don't like working in clutter. Like no. your office will be. It's just the rest. You're not it's, as particular as I am, but yeah, nobody. You can't be efficient when my stuff is not organized and it's it's chaotic. It feels that way to you and the clients. And right. again, we're always about luxury experience. That's how we scale. That's how we create loyalty with our clients too. So make sure your stuff is is tight. Right. It well, it just shows that you care about your space when you've taken mm-hmm. uh, you know those things into consideration. So if you have more storage, that lends less to leaving things out in the open because right. there's a place to go with it. If you don't have the space, then that mop bucket might sit out there, and that's the only thing that people can look at. All of a sudden, you know, they they just notice those things. So, right. Yeah. They that, get noticed for sure. They do. Yep. Excellent. Okay. So storage is important. Like you mentioned, um, yes. based on the, the rental versus commission, that may be, you might need even more space if you're right. all renters. I think that's a, a good call out there because if you're providing as the salon owner, if you're providing all the backbone things like that, you might take a different approach. We had a whole color wall yes. at, at one salon, you know, so that was different because that was sort of community color. We didn't have right maybe a couple of renters, but most of it was employee-based salon yes. in that situation. So yeah. again, that, that changes how much square footage you need per renter or per employee. Um, but again, it's put that, that's why you got to know what type of stylist you're looking right. for. You know, those things all factor into how you maximize your, your square footage. Yeah. Cause it, it, it's easy to keep jamming stations. Like we talked about back to back. Cause you think, well, I'm going to maximize my dollars. I'm going to have all these stylists, so I'm gonna put in as many stations as I can. Well, you might not get the stylists because you don't really have any room for them for their back bar and all that stuff right. too, you know? Like that, these are the things that they look at. They're coming in your space, they're renting a spot. They're looking at your station. They're looking at their spot for their back bar. They're looking at all those things. And if they're not in play, they're they're probably not gonna go there. Right, you're, you're definitely not gonna attract new no. people with a good book of business that, that will enhance the salon. You're going right. to attract people that are looking for a space and maybe haven't had those bad experiences right. yet to, uh, you know, they don't know. Right. That would be the only scenario. Otherwise the, the ones that know, no. And yeah. And, and a lot of times we want experienced stylists and unless we're really good at teaching and growing, um, our style, like a lot of people want that, right? You want a seasoned stylist that you can just start handing clients to and you don't have, that's less work for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's how you'll get them. 